Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art again, and I'm going to read more of this paper by Alvin M. Weinberg. It's called um, The S S Safety of Nuclear Power. It was a speech he gave in 1972 and printed in the Atlantic City Press, July 1973. It was released by the government on 10-2506. So I'm going to continue reading. Um, it's hot. We're all hot, but I'm going to keep reading. So we're at the bottom of this page, and I'm going to take off again. So here we go. Uh, let me read this sentence beforehand, because that was kind of an important sentence. Uh, in saying this, I omit another deeply essential safety consideration, and that is the extraordinary care that that nuclear engineer, designer, constructor, and operator take at every stage to ensure that the initiating malfunctions that could require emergency cooling will never occur. Really tell that to the people in San Onofre, where they were actually going to be installing uh, the wrong fucking part. There are those in the reactor community who believe that the extraordinary attention to what we call quality assurance will always ensure that the backup cooling systems will never be called into play. Really? Tell that to the people in Japan after they didn't even take care to place their uh, backup systems above where they thought the tsunami would come in. I shall not belabor this point here, but we'll return to it later. The fact remains that if one is trying to be practically 100% sure of always being able to cope with a reactor meltdown, then one must, in this context, and with these assumptions, in parentheses, credibility of the loss of coolant accident, credibility of the China syndrome, end parentheses, be absolutely certain that the engineered safety features particularly the emergency core cooling system, will work as planned. It was largely this background that led the AEC in late 1971 to promulgate criteria for pressurized water, rea water nuclear reactors that in effect placed an upper limit on the conceivable temperature the reactor might reach following a loss of coolant accident. Very arduous and sometimes acrimonious hearings related to these criteria were held last year. During this time, every aspect of the operation of the emergency court cooling systems, both in pressurized water reactors and in boiling water reactors, have been thoroughly re-examined. Although they are obviously cumbersome, the hearings have obliged all parties interveners, manufacturers, the AEC, safety engineers, to examine in excruciating detail the possible course of events following a loss of coolant accident. The criteria that have emerged represent additional conservatism in design both of light water reactors and of their emergency core cooling systems. Really? Especially now when the NRC is thinking about using the hormesis theory, which basically says, well, just to say, we're going to just say that low level radiation is good for the body and it'll help protect you from high level of radiation. That's what the hormesis theory is. These motherfuckers, you know what? I don't know how anybody can even work for that industry. This really, reading this paper really just does get me going. I think it is accurate to say that as, a re as reactor engineers recognize previously unrecognized potential, and I stress potential, uh -huh, I think it is accurate to say that as reactor engineers recognize previously unrecognized potential, and I stress potential hazards in nuclear reactors, they are quick to respond with fixes. For example, in a boiling water reactor, if the electrical load is lost, which occurs on the average of once a year in the big power station, the reactor must be immediately shut down 
by insertion of scram rods. The Advisory Committee on Reactor Safeguards has in recent years asked, suppose the scram rods all fail to insert under this circumstances, what then? One can argue that failure of all the scram rods to operate correctly is absolutely incredible. Yet this did happen in a one-of-a-kind reactor at Hanford a few years ago. Motherfucker. The upshot of the matter has been that large boiling water reactors now incorporate other schemes for shutting off the reactor after a sudden loss of electrical load. This is but one example of how fixes for specific weaknesses are being applied as the possible weakness is spotted. These motherfuckers, don't they get it? They need to shut this fucking industry down. It is a murderous, murderous, murderous industry. There is no good that comes out of nuclear. It is wise to recall periodically throughout this discussion that the events of which I speak are immensely improbable, you motherfucker. How improbable, for example, is the failure of the scramrod system? No one can really say, we can't give statistics as we can with traffic deaths where there are millions of separate instances. And there are not millions of separate instances, you a-hole. And our probabilities of fatalities are essentially empirical estimates. To be sure, we can estimate separate branches of a fault, of a fault tree, and arrive at overall probabilities. These come to one chance in a trillion of a reactor accident that might release one million curies per, uh, per reactor a year. I wonder how many curies are per, I mean, we've got billions of curies coming out, trillions of curies coming out of Fukushima. But such estimates are subject since are suspect since they do not deal with common mode failures. The unexpected fault that nullifies an entire safety system, like the same kind of grit setting into every one of the bearings of a rod drive system. To protect against such common mode failures, one can only follow complete different routes to safety that are known not to be vulnerable to the same common mode failure. To summarize, I cannot say that a serious reactor accident is impossible and will never happen. However, I can say that the probability of this ever happening is extremely small. And further, no matter how small the probability, the reactor community is exerting itself to ferret out and to correct possible weaknesses that could lead to trouble. I'm going to stop here. I am at eight minutes. We're going to pick this up where it says chemical processing and transport. Obviously, these arrogant motherfuckers really didn't know their business or their industry. And honestly, reading this paper makes me even more committed to stopping the nuclear industry. And I want to bring this up, you guys. We need people to write the NRC before September 8th and tell them that accepting the hormesis, hormesis theory where that says a little bit of low-level radiation is actually good for us and it's going to protect us from high level of radiation is complete 100% disproven in science and a hundred percent lazy motherfucking cowards bastards that's what it is because they have to put money into this to figure out how to stop Fukushima that's why they're doing it it even says that because of Fukushima because Fukushima they don't know how to stop it and there's so much radiation right now they're just going well we've got all this radiation we might just might as well cross our fingers and hope that we can get the radiation to help humanity instead of what it really does is kill people. It causes genetic mutation, it destroys our DNA, it destroys our children, destroys the future, it's killing the Pacific Ocean, and these motherfuckers aren't stopping. So I'll end here. Um, this is Thursday night. I won't post another video until Monday. I have my science class. I took the ecology of forest at school. 
and we're going off to the Redwoods this weekend, which sounded like a great idea at the time, but it's kind of weird, you know, like, I'm going camping with a bunch of people I don't know. <laughs> like, that's weird. But uh, we're going to drive five hours and then camp overnight and then camp overnight and come home Sunday. So I'll post a, a little bit more of this reading on Monday night. Um, my show starts on Monday at 8 a.m., uh, the Age of Vision. It's a radio show on ucy.tv. Please do join us. The first day I probably won't take phone calls, but I am going to be taking phone calls from listeners. I will be interviewing anti-nuke activists and people who can offer things to the community. And, um, you know, the whole point of the Age of Fission is to help people learn how to accept to live in the post-Fukushima era with grace, with courage, with joy. There's a lot of joy to be had and a lot of activity to be done. Like, we need to shut these motherfuckers down. The, the status quo thinks we're just going to, like, allow them to kill the fucking planet. As far as I'm concerned, we need to just start fighting back a little, you know, like, we don't need to fight. That's the issue. Fighting doesn't work. We need to just assert ourselves and demand from our elected officials humanity and reasonability. And I, when I write my letter next week to the NRC about this issue, the hormesis issue, I am going to share it with you on my YouTube so that you guys can... If you want to just copy it, you can. Um, I'll scan it. I'll make a PDF and make it as an attachment. But I'm going to do some scientific research, which is why I am not uh, writing something up really quick. I want to quote real scientific research that shows that hormesis is impossible. It, frankly, for even dogs. You know, the puppy killer, that motherfucker that uh, Dana exposed, who has been killing dogs for the last 30 fucking years. So anyways, thanks you guys for all your support of the Post Ignorance Project. And I look forward to your support of the Age of Vision radio show. You know, we can unite. And it is important that we unite and not just uh, uh, think that by listening to these videos we're doing something. It's extremely important that we take action. Every single person listening to this radio show needs to take action, especially on the hormesis theory that they're planning on. We need to get letters in by July 8th, I mean, September 8th. So um, can you tell I'm passionate about it? Because I can't stop talking about it. It's just on my brain all the time. But it is really, the reason it's important is it's like super important. They're planning on changing how we've already raised the radiation limits to where we warn people. And we used to warn people when people would get cancer at one in 10,000, when the radiation exposure was so bad, we'd get one in 10,000 would cause cancer and one in 10,000. Now we're not going to get warned by the government until one in 26 gets cancer which is almost the same as the hormesis theory, except the hormesis theory says we're not going to measure it at all, basically. That's really the issues. They're just not going to tell us, period. And that is unacceptable. And in fact, what we need to do is demand that they shut the motherfucking industry down and stop making nuclear weapons. So, ciao, you guys. And um, I just want to thank everybody who's been supporting the... I don't know, the whole thing, saving our planet. This is what it's about, saving our planet. So put your courage feet on and let's start marching. Let's start walking. Let's start demanding. Let's become a force to be reckoned with. Not just a force of, what they call that in the NRC email? Political theater. This is not fucking political theater. This is real. This is called saving the planet. So, ciao, you guys. I'll talk to you next week. I look forward to hearing from you on my radio show. Talk to you later. Bye.